conventional wisdom. Let's see. If you knew that uh, the president of Brazil was going to be impeached, if you knew that they were going to indict the previous president, if you knew that the largest company in Brazil, Petrobras, was going to have all these issues, and you knew there was a Zika epidemic, inflation runnings unbelievably high, unemployment doubling and increasing. And you could say to yourself, boy, could these things are happening in Brazil in 2016. Would you short the market if you knew the future? Or would you buy it or would you not invest in Brazil? And so obviously Brazil, in retrospect, was the currency and the market, one of the best performing markets in the world. Ray, can you tell us how to look at something like yeah, that? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, if you took two years before that, um, three years mm -hmm. before that, um, it would have been the, um, everybody was loving Brazil, you know, and it was very, very expensive, right? If it's loved, it's probably expensive, right? If it's hated, there's a good chance it's cheap, right? There's a saying of the, the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, right? So to know that something that is good may, may be very overpriced and something that is bad may be very cheap, you have to know how to do calculate value and also uh, expect change. Let's look at even something a little more current. It's 19, it's uh, 2015, and you were reading the newspaper in 2017. President Trump has been elected. You've been able to look two years in the future. He's now in a verbal war uh, with the leader of North Korea. Okay, every day uh, they're doing things. Now North Korea is creating video games showing how they're bombing U.S. aircraft carriers, etc., and having the students work on how to do this in school. A uh, lot of volatility in the world, people concerned. Should you be investing in South Korea at this period of time since you knew the future? Well, generally you'd be thinking, well, I'm not going to invest. Who knows? They're pretty close. And half the population of the country lives in Seoul. So they have difficulties. Well, if we look at how South Korea financial markets are doing this year, you'll see that their currency has moved up versus the U.S. currency. Their stock market's moved up substantially. Take us to 2017 and South Korea. Um, well, politics... Um, is also something to be fading. Uh, wars are something to fade. I mean, if you look at the history, um, you could take Kennedy's assassination, you could take the, most of the wars that we've gone into and so on, in, including uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor um, and various wars. And um, I think people uh, exaggerate the implications of the wars. In other words, they, there's a tendency to think that um, politics or global affairs uh, can destroy something, and then we're talking about the same phenomenon when it's uh, perceived as something that's not discounting the economics. So if we take Korea, um, if there's not a um, catastrophic event, uh, you have a situation economically and, um, that's going on in, in that region economically that's fantastic for companies and very strong for the currency. So I think it's an, uh, right now it's knowledgeable that the politics is not something that um, is an overarching issue unless there is, you know, the catastrophic event. But there tends not to be the catastrophic events.